I love, I love to sing a, I love, I love to ring a, I love those barbershop, barbershop chords. Give me those barbershop chords. Hello, Seneca Land, Pete Currents here. That's right, your district president wanted to talk to every one of the delegates for our upcoming House of Delegates meeting. Uh, as you can see, we're charting the course. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the budget. Because our challenge is to not only steer the ship, but to chart the course. It is time to not just take care of today's business, but to start thinking in the future. And if you want to change your results, then you've really got to change your thinking. And around budgeting, that's a concept called zero-based budgeting. Uh, now, it's a system that's been around for over 40 years, and you essentially start with zero. That means no dollars by each function or department. And then you start to build your plan, thinking through the budget you'll need based upon the activities you want to do, and even more so the results that you're looking for. And you put a little rigor as to how you arrive at the number. Now, most budgets are set incrementally, increasing or decreasing what was done the previous year. And there's really not any science behind the math. Guys sit around the room and say, you know, uh, last year we kind of did this, and I think next year's going to be a little better year, or I think next year's going to be a little worse. And that kind of thinking, well, let's just uh, decrease the budget by 10% on that line. That kind of thinking actually leads to self-fulfilling prophecy of decline, as you're never forced to challenge or understand why, or think, what if we, what if we tried that? Zero-based budgeting process actually walks hand in hand with your business plan. And when you complete the budget, it suddenly becomes your playbook to track if the organization is executing the plan. Leadership choices. We are all leaders. Uh, as delegates, you're definitely leaders of your chapter. And you're leaders of this district, believe it or not. Your role is much larger than you probably ever imagined when you said you'd be a delegate. Now, you're designed to choose, and you're defined by choice, the choices you make. The power to choose is the most powerful attribute and precious resource you have. It shapes who you become, how you express yourself, the success you achieve, and your influence in the world. You are a product of your choices, not your condition. And that's an important thing. We've been so worried about our conditions and not focusing in on our choices. And it is all about choices as the wheel spins round and round. Choosing where you want to place your bets. Now, uh, in a consultant role that I, I play for work, uh, I go and talk to organizations and uh, listen to the things that they tell me they want to do and what's important to them, listen to their mission statement. And, uh, then I ask for their budget. And I take a look at where the dollars actually line up with the big things they say they want to do. Uh, a little while ago, as uh, I'm moderating the district presidents for the society, we went through this little exercise. So, as a group, and that's way too small to read, but that's okay. I just want you to know we went through the six major buckets as districts, laid, laid our money out there, and then took it back to the spinning wheel. And we set on a $100 bet. All districts combined, here's how we put our money down. A dollar on membership. $7.20 on Youth and Harmony. $9 on Marketing and PR. The majority of that's internal. $16 on Music Education. $17 on Leadership. And $50 on Musical Adjudication. Now, we could say that music touches everything we do, and actually some district presidents got very hot when they saw this. And it's like, okay, so take Musical Adjudication out, so it's a $50 bet. We're still only spending a dollar on membership, and yet that's our number one aim. Does that seem right? And now that you're starting to think a little bit differently, if you want to change your world, we need to change the way we think about it. You're probably wondering, where does our proposed budget place our bets? And maybe, how have we placed our bets in the past? So, let's take a look at our 2009 budget. On a $100 bet, this is how we put our money down. 16 cents on membership, 
3842 on Youth and Harmony. 673 on Marketing and PR. 3011 on Musical Education. 977 on Leadership. And 1481 on Musical Adjudication. Hmm. But you know, just because you place your bets doesn't mean you actually spend the money. So, how did we actually spend our money? Well, on a 16 cent bet for membership, we spent nothing. And on a 38.42 bet in Youth and Harmony, we actually spent 1988. Marketing, uh, our budget was 6.73 on that hundred dollar bet. We spent 5.20. Musical education, we bet 3011 is what we said we were going to bet, but we really only put 11.25 down. Leadership, we said 9.77. We spent 36 cents. And musical adjudication. Uh, 1481 we uh, put down 973 so we definitely bet less than we had said we were going to and that's a fact in life so how about this year's budget uh, you, your board and, and I have uh, worked uh, three different Sundays in a row refining and going through the budget and here's how we would put down our money down on that hundred dollar bet 558 on membership 3428 on Youth and Harmony, 683 Marketing and PR, 3188 Musical Education, 974 on Leadership, and 1169 on Musical Adjudication. Now you might be wondering just what things go in these different buckets that uh, get us up to our bet, and that is the magic of zero-based budgeting. I was uh, introduced to this about seven years ago in Los Angeles. South African Breweries purchased Miller Brewing Company and I was running the uh, Los Angeles business unit for Miller Brewing Company and uh, our 18 million dollar budget had to go through this process of zero based budgeting. So basically we had up to 18 million we could have but we had to account for every penny within a plan. So we had to write a plan that called for the need of 18 million dollars and we also had to at the same time present our results for that spend. So I'd like to do that with you. Start with some uh, top line facts. Our starting cash on hand this year, beginning this year, $39,499. And uh, if, if we run with this budget that we're proposing to you, uh, we'll finish cash on hand would be $42,901. You say, well, that's pretty good. At the end of the year, we're gonna, we're gonna be up 3,000 more than we started. But there's a little factor in here that you're not maybe aware of. The generosity of Warren Campanos for the Barbershop Harmony Foundation, he earmarked 30% donation to the district on a couple of his gifts. So the district is getting $15,000 uh, due to the courtesy of Warren this year that is being put into the budget. So actually, if you back, back that out, this budget has a, a negative loss of $11,598. So where's the money? and how, how are we planning to spend it. 